So I heard there was a new update coming out. A friend of mine asked me if I'd check it out and I was pretty... meh on the whole thing. Here's the thing, in case you were living under a rock in 2016, there was a bit of hype for this game. It was going to revolutionize gaming. A game where you could go anywhere, do anything, explore the stars, participate in interstellar commerce, battle space pirates, I don't know. This was all helped along by an excited founder and spokesperson, Sean Murray, who promised a whole bunch of features that on day one were noticeably lacking, or in some cases, completely vacant. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes, but the chances of that are incredibly rare, just because of the size of what we're building. Wow. <gasps> really? Pick that up. Pick that up. Yummy. Pick it up right now. Pick that up. Pick it up. Go throw it in the trash. Turn around, throw it in the trash right now. From the get-go, No Man's Sky was met with some very understandable hostility from the gaming community. People were finding that they didn't have much to do other than hop around from pastel-colored world to pastel-colored world, and finding the occasional entertaining procedurally generated animals that seemed to be ripped straight out of 2008's ambitious flop Spore. But through this firestorm of terrible reviews and refunds, Hello Games didn't simply grab their bag of cash and run. Which, after a cursory glance at Wikipedia, it appears that bag of cash would have been filled with over $60 million. Their concurrent player base had gone from over 200,000 to just 2,000 in a month. They could have given up, but they didn't allow it. They decided that they would honor their commitments and get back to work, adding features that they had promised. Over the last three years, there have been seven major updates to this game, steadily adding features and broadening the scope, bringing the game closer and closer to the vision that we had for it back when we were getting hyped in 2016. I won't go into detail on each of them, as you can check them all out online, I'll throw the patch notes in the description for the interested. But this brings us to now, back when a friend asked me, Anyone going to jam No Man's Sky after the update? To which, after years of playing off and on, I replied, Hmm, I might be. Didn't know there was an update, but that game's always fun to revisit. You can smell my indifference. I was one of those folks who didn't buy the hype, waited for the day one people to freak out, and waited years for it to get to a state where it was playable before I bought it. I wanted to hop in again now to try the VR, as I still haven't been happy with many games in VR yet. So I hopped in, and I can truly say No Man's Sky VR is one of the best VR experiences I have ever played. So much so that I found myself staying in way longer than most other titles, just playing the game. Most of the time in VR, there's some novelty of being in the game world, but for myself, I always find the novelty wears off, and I'd rather just play it on PC at the comfort of my overpriced gaming chair. This game is a little different for two reasons. Number one, the worlds themselves are something to behold in VR. You don't get the scope of the game on a computer screen the same way you do in your headset. When you climb a mountain, go down a cave system, or look up at some enormous tree or an animal passing by, the scale of everything around you really immerses you into these worlds. You feel small, and the galaxy around you feels utterly enormous. And number two, they put in the work to use gestures that immerse you further. Many games in VR seem to have developers who think that just porting the game over and having you click on things is enough. Hello Games did not. Thank God. A few of my favorite examples, just small things. You brandish and stow your multi-tool by grabbing behind your right shoulder. You point at your wrist to bring up a small menu to physically select which of the things you want to build or which system you want to recharge. And my personal favorite, you bring your left hand up next to your face to press your scanner, which is a visor that is on your head. It sounds small, but all these little things add up to this extra immersion that you can't get from a keyboard and mouse in front of your monitor. These are things that so many other devs mess up, and you have the potential to really draw a player into the world using these gestures that make you feel like you're there. Hello Games nailed this. But like all VR, I just can't stand there for hours on end. There's nothing that they can do to change that, the tech itself just has a ways to come. So that's it, right? I tried it, it was cool, but sitting back at my computer, 
I wanted to play a little more. I booted it up on PC, and after a minute of remembering controls that don't make me feel like a futuristic space robot, i.e. the Vive controls, I was right back at it. And I have been back at it for about a week now. I can't stop. Please save me. <laughs> I just wanted to play enough to get some footage for this review, but I honestly feel like I have enjoyed it in a way that I hadn't before. And after all these updates, it's really now a great game. Another good friend of mine, when seeing me log into No Man's Sky on Steam, simply wrote, RIP YOUR DIGNITY, as if I'm now a bad person for having played such garbage. And hell, if it was 2016, I'd have to agree with him, but today, you just have to play it to see how great it really has become. Now I've played for about a week, and like I'd mentioned, I'm beginning to see where it might get grindy and repetitive. It seems like at this point, I could just continue to make money, get better ships, etc. But for what? And if the endgame is what it used to be, I won't spoil it here in case you want a fresh experience, then that may still suck. But even if I stopped playing right now, I'd be happy with its current state and the fun that I was able to get out of it. I won't go into detail with pros and cons on this one. It's really your sort of thing or it's not. I guess this is more of an appeal than a review. If you were someone like me who avoided this game in 2016 because it appeared to be overhyped garbaggio, or maybe you're someone who got burned by it and never booted it up again, I'd say get back in there, give it another spin. You might be happy with the game that it is today. So because I think it's kinda awesome, but I'm still kind of wary of the late and end game content. I give this one a 7 out of 10 Derby Extraterrestrials, 8 out of 10 if we're comparing it to other VR titles. Hey everybody, thanks so much for sticking around till this point of the video. Don't worry, this time I won't even say it. Don't click on anything unless you really want to, okay? Don't click sub unless you really want to, don't click like unless you're super rad, and don't leave a comment unless you have something super important and insightful to say. All I have to say is, until next time, Greybeard, out.